Having stalled Schultz's column, Lieutenant Hardingham's section on the afternoon of the 5th of September rendezvoused with a detachment of two companies of the 29th Punjabis and 85 men of the 1st and 3rd King's African Rifles under Lieutenant Skinner. Hardingham reported to Skinner that the Germans were around 200 men and had four machine guns. Captain Skinner, less than 10 miles from Tosavo, thought it best to advance back the way Hardingham had retreated from. For the remaining afternoon and evening, Captain Skinner's column attempted to make contact with Schultz, when after marching five miles, now 15 miles away from, from Tosavo, Skinner sent a runner back to Major James, reporting the Germans had slipped past him. While they had been in the thick thorn brush, actually they had been right next to one another, in column. When a response arrived back, Major James ordered Skinner to fall back to Tosavo and attack the German column in the rear. Five miles from Tosavo, Major James had deployed another company of the 29th Punjabis, some additional King's African Rifles, and a naval artillery piece awaiting the Germans. Forces of the King's African Rifles were approaching from the north and south. In essence, Major James had effectively on paper boxed in the German column. Before the encirclement could be completed, five miles from Major James's line, Schultz's column hit Skinner's men in the rear. In the ensuing confusion, the African brush was the clear winner. As Skinner and his men exchanged fire, at midday at 12.50, two runners reached Major James to report his position. Dispatched at 12.45, five minutes before shots were exchanged, Major James rushed his units in all sorts of positions and directions to surround the German column. What truly happened was a maelstrom of confusion thanks to the thick brush. Skinner's firing line was reinforced by a section led by Lieutenant Oldenfield's B Company of the 4th King's African Rifles. Major James had heliographed messaged Oldenfield to send his company forward to cut down the German forces, but the brush had blocked the message. He had simply taken a section forward to investigate the rifle fire. Oldenfield deployed his men into the British line, while the British Ascari held Lieutenant Oldenfield was immediately killed upon joining the action. The rest of his company wouldn't join the action that day, despite more messages being sent by Major James on the heliograph. At one moment, Captain Pottinger advanced to a hill north overlooking the German firing line, his entire company behind him, but by the time he summited the crest of the hill, he had about 10 men with him. The rest of his men were struggling to follow in the African bush. Pottinger ordered number 4050 Nik Gul Mohammed to lead the rest of the company to the crest. As he fell back, he came upon Schultz's machine gunners. In a mad minute, he silenced the German machine gun. As he fell back to reload, Mohammed found Subdihar Sherbaz with a section. The pair made their way back just as the Germans attempted to bring back to action the silenced machine gun. Mohammed was wounded by the returning German fire. As Subduhar Sherbaz attempted to drag the wounded Mohammed, a German bullet went through Subduhar's head, and it would take Pottinger's retreat to pick up the wounded Mohammed. By this time, the Germans had occupied the hill Pottinger had taken. As Pottinger redeployed his men, Lieutenant Phillips' King's African Rifles moved forward to engage the German line. Now that the combined weight of Pottinger and Phillips' men were firing on the Germans, the Germans hastily abandoned their position. Skinner, seeing the German forces flee, takes the heights with what men he had. The rest of the action is small firefights throughout the rest of the African bush. Despite the Germans falling back and the British halting, the 6th and 7th of September is full of small firefights. While Major James did the best his training allowed to surround the enemy column, the African bush threatened him. The British heliograph messages to the north at Imtito Andi hadn't been seen due to the thick African bush. The forces from the south at Burra and Maktau didn't arrive till the 7th at Tembo. There, outside Tembo, the King's African Rifles infantry managed to capture one of the many German ambulance parties. While the mounted infantry detachment surrounded and shot up a different German ambulance party. Despite the non combatant nature of the German doctors, this was hidden by the African bush and the surgeons and the stretcher bearers were cut down. When this was discovered, an apology was sent from Nairobi and issued to the German capital at Dar es Salaam. But the majority of the day was spent by the Germans withdrawing back to the border, while the British were spent rallying their men and mop up operations. German exact losses are unrecorded. Schultz simply records his casualties as light. British casualties in the first Indian engagement of East Africa was two officers and 18 other ranks.